All right. <laughs> Welcome to the Dr. G show with Dr. G and the boss. I'm the boss, and this is Dr. G. It's nice to meet you. All right. What's uh, your name? Who are you? This is Holly Hajaja. <laughs> it never gets old. To him. 105 episodes, and I still, it's like the same joke over and over, and it's just as fresh as the day that I started. For him. <laughs> so, my <coughs> name is Holly Hajaj. And um, I am here. We're here today to talk to you about the continuant continuation. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying tonight. Um, this is the continued show. Yeah, part two. Part two. Part two. This is part two. Part two. Of uh, how to reverse cardiovascular disease. Yeah. And uh, so last time we talked about um, kind of what were the major factors that led to heart disease. We talked about women are more likely to have heart disease, and then um, today we want to get back into the um, group of like the research that talks about. Um, what actually reverses or prevents heart disease that people can start doing. And then we'll also talk a little bit about nat natokinase. Um, so as you guys have questions, post those, and we'll go through them now and then also later. Hey, and Linda. She says, good evening, my favorite local celebs. Oh. <laughs> uh, we have you seen me that. on Cops? I'm on Cops, for sure. Yeah. That's what how they know me. Before we get into the um, gist of tonight's talk. Anybody yes. who has joined us and who has been with us for previous shows, how are you doing with your behavior change? How are you doing with mm. your wellness practices? Yeah. What is going well for you? Because if... ah, Thanks, Amy. <laughs> well, that's bullcrap. I think she said that just to make people assume my hair sucks. <laughs> that's crazy. Um... I'm going to remember this now. You're like the grandma I never I had. was feeling a little bit older because it shows the halo, yeah. you know. You're but like the grandma I never had. <laughs> I'm going to choose not to respond to that. I pull all my gray hair out. <clears throat> so, ha aw, thanks, Missy. Hi, hello. She is adorable, isn't she? <laughs> Alfredo, um, you're not my friend. <gasps> and so... Alfredo really likes to push the boundaries. He is. He's a Alfredo is like me. He's like a mini me. <laughs> he's like he's, the you on the other side. He's like a a, a Todd version of both of us. <laughs> uh, you better be glad I can take a joke, Alfredo. <laughs> so, um, anyway, what's going well? What have you guys done this last week, yeah. or since you joined us for the last time, the last talk that you joined us with? What's going well for you? Please let us know. Because what's going well for you will help someone else with their wellness practices. You, you'll become the light for other people. Everybody's a teacher. Yeah. I'm lucky. <laughs> it was for you. Oh, my... Dang it. Alfredo said my hair sucks, not her hair sucks. Because that seemed a bit harsh. Yeah. I I like a good insult, so I wasn't really offended. So, which, by the way, I just want you guys to know, when you see those pictures of me posting my uh, pictures for my runs in the morning, like, I realized the other day, like, I don't do anything to my hair. Like, this is how my hair almost is when I wake up. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy. Yeah. Since uh, eighth grade, it's the same haircut. So, so. All right. So, last time, to kind of recap, we said real heart disease is caused by lifestyle. And so we went through and we said low omega-3s, high insulin, high glucose, low vitamin D, high homocysteine, low potassium, low testosterone, high estradiol. You get, are low, you going to come up for air yeah, at some point? Yeah. Okay. Then low nitrous oxide, low HDLs, oxidized or peroxidized uh, LDLs, high triglycerides, high fibrinogen, and high blood pressure. These were all what again? The actual causes of hypertension, uh, hy uh, so heart disease, right? Okay. So when we want to basically create a protocol that says how do we reverse heart disease, well then we just say what are the causes of heart disease? What are the things that contribute to them uh, that are more likely to cause the heart attacks? 
And then how do we just eat our way or live our way out of those things? Right. Yeah. Can I jump in right quick? Mm, okay. Since you're the boss. <laughs> I'm just here to give people a break. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Amy says that she joined Planet Fitness with her son. Mm. And she's been working out on the weights, on the weights six days a week for the past two months. That's amazing. Yeah. She's kick-ass. Great job. Good job, Amy. Keep up the good work. Everybody else, share your success stories, even if they're little. Even her- if it's, I didn't have one of the sodas I usually have today. That's success. That's success. That's not, that's not very good. <laughs> so, uh, Amy, uh, her son just got engaged to, uh, I think Morgan. And, like, they are, like, the prettiest couple in the whole world. Oh. Like, they shouldn't post on Facebook. They make the rest of us, like... Feel bad about feel our bad lives. about our lives. Every time I see pictures of them, I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> should just give up at this point. <laughs> okay, yeah. So, last time we talked about heart disease, what causes it. Now we're talking about... How to uncause How it. to how to undo it, how to reverse it, how to prevent it, yeah. and go. All right. So let's start out with something really kind of like uh, over the top kind of thing. So uh, university, no, it would be Boston University School of Medicine. Okay. Right? They don't have just a music program. They got, they got a medical side to them. So Boston University uh, published this research. I think it was New England Journal of Medicine, and then Prevention Magazine uh, put it on one of the covers. But it was how to reverse heart disease by 92%. 92%. Only 92. I mean, I I was hoping for 94, so I was kind of disappointed by it. But (laughs) 92% in a country where women are more likely to have heart attacks than men, because you guys are obviously number one. And then uh, where one out of two people has heart disease, and we see uh, kids as young as 10 years old starting to get foam cells in their arteries which is contributing to heart disease so just the american diet of five years of like really eating like americans americans uh you end up with these pre-heart con- uh, heart disease conditions so the five things are out of control insane how could they ever expect an american to do these things to cut their risk by 92 percent 92 percent you just repeat i'm just a mockingbird tonight just- I told him he, I gave him the wheel, so if I need to put the brakes on him, you are guys got to let me know. Are you going to make the drug references and the bad jokes? <laughs> no. No? No, you're going to have to make room for that. All right. I got to do everything. All the heavy lifting is me. No. So. I'm just here for moral support. <laughs> so, the first thing is, five things, right? The five first thing, things. First thing is drink one chocolate glass milk. of chocolate milk. <laughs> Extra sugar a day. No, that doesn't sound right. No, that's wrong. I bet it's wine. Drink one glass. Why don't we ask them? One. Go ahead. They don't know. That's why they're watching. They don't. Did you hear that? <laughs> okay, no, I'll ask a question you guys know. So it says one glass of alcohol, one glass of wine. But what kind of wine is always medicine, always reversing heart disease? And what kind of wine is causing heart disease and it's just basically sugar and inflammation yeah which is which is a, which is the good wine which is the bad wine you tell what if there's two witches and then one was bad and then they're like which witch <laughs> so many puns this is so many okay we, missy says red oh missy's pretty cool red for witch missy which That's red is good witch. <laughs> Red is good. You don't know your witchology. Tell, what was what does the white do again? Whoa, this isn't a rally. <laughs> so, <laughs> red wine is always medicine. Alfredo says um, white. Whoa. Let's put a caveat on that. What? Ten glasses of red wine is not healthy. That's good. Well, no, okay. So we're sar- talking no, no, no. one or two. Sardinians are one of the healthiest, longest living populations on earth. And they drink an average of a half a carafe of red wine a day. That's a how many glasses in a, is in a carafe? And what size is their carafe? Twenty glasses it, make one. Is it one, like a, no. a gallon? Twenty twenty cra- twenty glasses of wine make one carafe. So half a carafe is ten, just like a. 
You can it's, eat grapes. That's not true. <laughs> a craft is like, I think, a bottle of wine, so it's half a bottle of wine. Which is maybe three? Yeah, three glasses. <laughs> yeah, come to us for the for the real information, for the true information. Um, so, red wine is medicine, but white wine... Uh, and then uh, uh, beer and, and, and Moscato and those kind of sweet stuff. They're just sugar. They're just things that are going to cause triglycerides to go up. Really, It's really bad for triglycerides. Yeah. yeah. And then it'll cause more heart disease. Um, Amy's saying if you're allergic to grapes and brewer's yeast, red wine may not be your best friend. She found that out the hard <clears throat> way. Yes, that's true. So, now not everybody's allergic like she is. But uh, luckily, there's lots of other things than red wine. So you don't have to drink red wine for this. There's all these other things that we'll talk about, too. So, Amy, you're still going to be okay. <laughs> um, before you go into the next part, I don't want to lose this stuff. I want to celebrate people's successes. Sherilyn says she made non-dairy ice cream with coconut milk. Nice. Sweetened with maple syrup and stevia. Sweet. Sherilyn, that's awesome. Um, I thought we had another one on here, too. Keep sharing. Um, oh, Linda says she's we're still working on a meal plan that works for her. And that's that's going to be an ongoing thing as yeah. well. That's going to be a lifelong process of what works for you and what doesn't. So just do raw vegan in the beginning and add meat and whatever else you want to that. And so that's the most simplest thing ever is just graze all day on a whole bunch of like produce and then uh, make things more complicated as you have more time. Okay. Yeah. That's my story now. Good job. All right. So the second thing out of these five, the second, uh, first one is get drunk. The second one <laughs> is a healthy diet based on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, fish, and legumes. Fruits, mm. vegetables. It sounds like that saying I say. Yes. Fruit, vegetable, nuts, seed, berry, legume, and greens. That's all you need. If you watch his shows, you'll hear that at least three times per show. Yeah. So that's awesome. So basically that's raw vegan. So, but if you do vegetarian, that's fine. If you do more complicated stuff and add a little bit of meat, that's still fine too. But really you want that fruit, vegetable, nut, seed, berry, 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 legume, and greens. Yeah. So real food. So that's what I do most of the time is I do mostly raw vegan. I make a bunch of food on uh, Sunday night, drink a little martini, play a little record, uh, and then do I make a, a lot dance and then i uh make a little look do a little dance you've seen that song yes yeah that's not very good <laughs> survey says <laughs> <laughs> hi kendra uh, hi edna thank you edna yeah alfredo says go vegan yeah so uh that's the easiest way really is is vegan so get like a raw vegan well you don't even need a raw vegan cookbook but you can but just uh just very simple keep things very simple with food so fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, berry, legumes, and greens. And so when you look at that healthy diet part, uh, even with the wine, or the first thing with the wine, most Americans are drinking beer and white wine or sweet wine, which is not helping their heart disease. Uh, most people are not eating but one fruit or vegetable a day. In one. America. One. So, so let's talk about this. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. But how... How do you get more? Yeah. And maybe you guys are already doing more than one a day. What are you doing besides just buying it out and eating it straight out of the bag? I just get a, I get my lunch bag and I just put a few oranges, some carrots, some broccoli, and I just eat it on the go and eat it at the office. And there are some, some hummus, people, you, some you guys, with it. you guys tell me there are some people that's just not very satisfying. Oh, you know what's more satisfying than having a heart attack? The inconvenience of eating real food. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kendra, don't don't answer this question. Kendra, can you say that one more time, but slower? That's what she says. Okay, <laughs> fruits, vegetables, oh, nuts, nuts seeds, seeds, berries, berries legumes, and, and greens. greens. What kind of greens? Is that iceberg lettuce? Dark leafy greens. No, we want dark oh, leafy greens. Are you asking them or me? I was asking them, but right. it's okay. Yeah, which is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so dark leafy greens, yeah. 
Oh, and, and they have fish on here too. Uh, but again, wild caught, fatty uh, from the ocean. So salmon, tuna, halibut, mackerel, cod, sardines. Can you talk a little bit about fish? Fish? Yeah. Because there's good fish and bad fish. Yeah. Wild caught is the legal term for fish. And um, so that's your, your most anti-inflammatory ones with the lowest possible mercury are salmon, tuna, halibut, mackerel, cod, sardines, and anchovies. But don't buy tuna that's by name. So if it says yellowfin, bluefin, um, uh, albacore, you want that crappy little stuff that, that's not the big giant ones that they use for uh, sushi. Yeah. It would just canned tuna, but if you can. And it's the smaller size fish that are better, right? Right, right. So they're the And why is that? So the longer something lives, the more bioaccumulation it has. Okay. So as we pollute the environment and uh, have all this plastic and chemicals in the water, they're more likely to absorb that, deposit in their fat, and then um, get more and more of that. So like a tuna, like a bluefin tuna, it might be like four or five hundred pounds, you know. Right. So, if kind it's, of like how I feel today. Right. <laughs> it, uh, it might, <laughs> is that a joke? God dang it! It's sarcasm, but I sort of feel that way. If you're gonna be the one telling um, jokes, you gotta step up your game and give like dad jokes, like no, a really good dad joke. I'm gonna be or myself. Or mom jokes. No. No. I'm just going to be myself. What about single white girl jokes? <laughs> um, I'm not going to respond to that. So I'm going <laughs> to jump in and answer some comments. Okay. So Sherilyn has a question. Yes. I don't drink wine, but occasionally a restaurant prepares my chicken and vegetables in a white wine sauce. Is that okay? Or is it still inflammatory? Mm, it's probably the least of your concerns. I mean, that should be okay. Yeah. Okay. Not the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, want, if you you're doing this? that all day, every day, for every right. meal. Yeah, and it's not going to be all that much. I mean, you know, dip versus you just drinking it. Uh, but you want this much good and then that much bad or that much bad or that much bad. So okay. it's just uh, progress over perfection. Anybody out there like fish Scott or not like fish. Scott said he likes fish. Aw, thank you, Kendra. She loves watching us. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> no, we gotta tell together. Like, hmm. It's <laughs> very sweet. Very sweet. Very kawaii. Okay. All right. So the next one, Did though. You didn't answer my question. Oh, never about mind. fish. I love fish. One way you can do fish is to do it in parchment paper, and so it's a very French way of doing it. Uh, so, like, if you make a, a say, orange, wild-caught orange roughy Provencal, you put all the little herbs and stuff and, and the olive oil and, and, and the vegetables in that bag, and then you would uh, close the parchment paper over, and then you would roast it, and then uh, infuses all that stuff in there. Like, it tastes amazing. So, for people that don't really like fish, maybe the taste of fish, using balsamic vinegar on it's really good, roasting it on the... Um, grill is really good especially skin on so you know there's lots of ways you can prepare it that's that's uh, makes it taste a hell of a lot better so Kendra mm. says fish is delish that's right delish. I like that fish is delish you just like it because it Ooh. rhymes and you know you can also take like arrowroot mix it with a bunch of seasonings and then coat your fish with that saute it in an iron skillet with a little bit of olive oil and it's super healthy pan and fried fish what if you hate cooking then you need to date someone that cooks <laughs> so you have to uh, well it just raw there, vegan. there are some simple raw vegan. i mean you can eat tuna out of the can or wait yeah is tuna, you can eat salmon that's eat the pre-packaged BPA3. yeah but yeah and in fact like i took a wild caught orange roughy and then if you put that in lime juice it will cook it and then you don't have to cook anything. So, so that's how I make my like orange rough, wild caught orange roughy ceviche. Oh, but that's, it's not a big deal. It's just ceviche. Uh, with wild caught orange roughy. <laughs> with wild <laughs> caught orange roughy. Must not be very good. I'm still single. So. Um, so why fish? Why is fish important? What does it do for us? Fish mm. provides what kind of omegas? What kind of omegas? Are you asking me? 
No. Because I don't I'm know asking the, them. I don't know the answer. Oh, well, yeah. It provides additional omegas. What kind does it provide? Hadn't it did emoji cons for Anybody know? Fish? Omega. Hmm. Technically, did, it has all the omegas in there. <laughs> but it's what's dominant. Three. Dominant. We've got a three. Yep. That's right. Three. That's right. Hey, it's and, Tim. <clears throat> all right. Do you know what the ratio of omega threes to omega sixes should be? Do you know what that is? The ratio of omega threes to omega sixes. I tell this to every patient. You do? Then your patients should know it. They should, but I don't give them a test at the end. The test is life and <laughs> happiness. I don't know if they remember it. Uh, okay, <clears throat> so. <clears throat> We'll wait while people people give responses. So Linda says, is pink salmon okay? Yeah, uh, it should be pink because it eats zastaxanthins, which then stains the meat pink. So from crustaceans. So it is okay? Mm-hmm. And so Tim, we've got six to one. We've got two to one. Any other answers? Did you say omega threes to six? <laughs> Did you say omega threes to sixes or six to three? Omega three. It's the same thing. No, What's the ratio no, of ratio. omega threes yeah, three to six? To six. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Three to six. What do you think it is? I know what it is. So I can't answer. Well, you probably answer now that everybody has to Okay, let's go to an answer so we're not wasting more time. One, two. Oh, you do know it. Okay. But sometimes one to two. For which? The three. So here's the reason why, why it's one to one. I know, I know that that probably seems confusing because we're talking about needing more omega threes. The problem is that our diet is so lacking in omega threes that we have to eat more of them to balance out. To undo now, the damage. We need the omega sixes. They cause inflammation, but we need we have inflammatory processes in the body that we need omega sixes for, but we also need omega threes to calm that back down right. and balance it out. So, what is the ratio of omega-3s of anti-inflammation to inflammatory omega-6s for the American diet? Omega-3s to ratio of, that's oh, the two to now, one? Now you're that's asking, the two to one. No, that's not two to one, it's way, 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 way. Higher? Yeah. Okay, well what is it? So we'll see if they know. So while you guys are answering, what is the, uh, for the American diet, how much of the inflammatory fatty acids are we getting compared to the anti-inflammatory? Oh, currently what we're getting? Yeah, that's what I, you're asking. I tell that to every patient. Too. Oh, okay. So let's okay. see if anybody ever even listens to me ever. <laughs> um, let's stop there just for a moment. Oh, you give there. people so much information yeah. that maybe they can't remember all those details. Yeah. So I'm just saying. So when I go on dates, I tell them like 4,000 things. <laughs> all right. Go on. All right. So, why is fish so important? Um, so at Harvard, they said that fish has nine completely separate mechanisms by which it reverses heart disease. So when you wow. eat fish, like it's just like, eh, it's fish, right? But when you eat fish, it blocks platelet aggregation. So prevents clotting. Prevents clots, which is heart attack and stroke. So one out of every two Americans is at risk of heart attack and stroke. Boom, gone with that. Okay. Reduces blood vessel constriction. Okay. So it dilates your blood vessel, so blood pressure drops, and so you don't have to take blood pressure medicines. Uh, increases blood flow. So okay. for erectile dysfunction, that's a big deal. Uh, for brain flow, that's a really important deal. I was waiting for a joke, but go ahead. So humans only have, men only have, a, they have two heads, but only enough blood to fill one <laughs> at a time. I opened the door for that. I'm you sorry. Did. I'm sorry. You did. Go so. ahead. I don't get the joke. What does that mean? I don't understand the joke. <laughs> and the next. All right. Lowers oh, fibrinogen. So fibrinogen is the thing that actually causes the uh, uh, clots. So. So it, fib think fibrous or. It's fibrogenic. So it yeah. makes more fibrin that makes more clots. Yeah. So let me ask you a question on this. Mm, I wasn't quite is it finished. just fish or omega threes in general that does all these things? Did you ever see that movie where the girl didn't interrupt the guy? Did you ever see that? Okay, so wait, what was your question? <laughs> Sorry, it's back. 
You have added to this interrupt this. <laughs> Okay. Okay, so interesting. Yeah. So what's the question? Is this just fish or is it omega-3 fats in general? You got me there. It's omega-3s <laughs> in general. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, go on, though. Go on. So, so fish but, yeah. slash omega-3s? Yeah. Okay. But where do you get your omega-3s? Nuts, well, seeds, okay, chia, nuts seeds. All right, fine. flax. Fine, fine. fine. This is Harvard research, by the way. Harvard. <laughs> but they Harvard. did the study on fish, so we should stay with fish. Yeah. Okay. But it's the same. It is. Okay. You're right. You're right. So it lowers triglycerides. Yeah. So that's the converting sugar to fat molecules. And it raises antioxidant-rich HDLs. Woohoo! HD to the L. What what? High-density lipoproteins. Dang. And then it increases cell membrane flexibility. Yeah, so think about this analogy. Like if you have a garden hose that's been out in the sun for years and it's hardened and maybe shrunk a little bit, then that could be your arteries if you don't eat fish. That's right. And then it lowers blood pressure overall. So just adding fish and that's the mediterranean diet right so in the in america we say cholesterol causes heart disease because we obviously know god hates americans so he made bad cholesterol to only kill us with heart disease but europeans he loves and that's why 70 percent or they have a 70 percent uh less heart disease than americans because their bad cholesterol is not as bad as ours i like uh, how you decided that you're <laughs> the mouthpiece for god I didn't say the God, I said a God. <laughs> so, uh, when you look at the Mediterranean diet or those other countries that have low, substantially lower heart disease, it's just their diet and lifestyle. That's all it is. Okay, so we've talked about wine. So get we've drunk. We've talked about fish. Eat healthy. These are the things that reduce your risk of heart attack by 92%. Only 92. According to Boston. Only two. Okay. Only 92. So, I'll let you do the other one. So, like, uh, What else we got? That's you. Daily the exercise. Third, what? I was going to introduce it. The third <laughs> one. Are you done with food? In yeah, then we already did food. Okay, so. Because we had the fish, now we're done the fish. Okay, wine, food, fish. And then movement. Movement. And we yeah. talked about it in previous shows. Do you guys remember how many minutes per week everybody should be getting? You're full of poop. God <laughs> loves us too. Does anybody remember how many minutes? of exercise we want to be getting in general on average per week. And which by the way, we didn't answer the inflammatory to anti-inflammatory ratio for Americans. So it's 40 times the inflammatory omega-6s versus the omega-3s. So that's why when you talk about you want to overdo omega-3s, especially in the beginning, uh, and then eventually just if you eat real food and, and you're fine, but uh, in the beginning, we want to undo all that. So we have to eat a lot of omega-3s, eat lots of fish, or take lots of fish oils or algae oil or something like that. 40 times. That's insane. Insane in the membrane. So, literally. The membrane of the heart. <laughs> I was with you on that one. Um, Amy's asking, have you addressed atrial fib? Oh, we got that. Boom. We did talk a little bit about arrhythmias in the first show. So arrhythmias, so the heart... The electroconnectivity of the heart runs off omega threes, threes, is, omega three, not omega sixes, right? So if you eat a high omega six diet, then there can become these little irritations of that electroconnectivity, and then people have arrhythmias from that. Um, what so, is a? Can you say what a high omega six diet is? Bunch of corn and processed food. Corn and processed food. Yeah. Manufactured, processed, refined. So when you look at the grocery store, you have 40,000 items in that box. Everything around the edge is real, right? It's like one ingredient, it's real stuff. It may not be healthy, but it's real. Then now, everything Therefore, it has middle, to be refrigerated, which is right. why it's on the out outside. Yeah. Except Dylan's has the refrigerant, refrigerated stuff in the center. But <laughs> they're rebels. But that's because they're so... They do, at the human, or the... Yeah, they do. That's because they're a little bit more affluent than some other stores. So then, oh, everything in the middle uh, is basically the same same handful of ingredients, flavor and texture to look different. So about 30 
nine thousand of those forty thousand things are uh, just a bunch of processed inflammatory crap. So yeah. So back to um, atrial fib. Okay, so atrial fib. So uh, it's funny because atrial fib should be a very easy thing to fix for most people because again, just like everything else, it's self-induced. So looking at whether you're doing enough magnesium in your diet, which is fruits and vegetables. Are you doing enough magnesium, which is dark greens in your diet? Are you getting enough anti-inflammatory omega-3s, which is fish and fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, berries, legumes, greens? Um, what else? There it was. Again. Oh, and then are you getting toxicity? So, you know, there's some time, like we had one patient that we got rid of his arrhythmias, he got off of all his medications, and then he got a new job at a restaurant and started uh, having a little bit here and there at work. And we traced it back to the pesticide that's in the apple that's not organic that are free at the uh, restaurant. So one of those causes that, so stop doing that. And then uh, he ends up uh, getting rid of his arrhythmias again. Mm. So, How about food sensitivities? Can that cause a heart to skip, Tim is asking. Yeah, so food sensitivities, food sensitivities are caused by uh, um, T cell dysregulation with a uh, primary molecular mimicry. And when it does that, when your immune system is suppressed from sugar, stress, and chemicals, uh, then it makes mistakes and it makes memories of those mistakes and then if your food mistakes a, a, a Sorry, if your body mistakes a food for an for a pathogen then every time you eat that it produces this chain reaction Which then ends up stimulating mast cells to produce histamines and depending on what type of histamines that are produced uh, Some of those actually go to the heart and will cause arrhythmia. Oh, really? So the answer is yes. yes. Oh, okay. That's a short answer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, answer is yes. <laughs> what about uh, Missy, and thank you for this one because I want to do a show on this mm. soon. Mm. Um, Missy says thyroid can mm. cause heart problems. Yeah, that's absolutely not. Yeah, oh, wait, it is true. Yeah, it's very true. Yeah, so if, if heart gets out of whack, uh, that extra um, um, thyroid can actually jack up the heart and make it beat really fast. So back in the day, I used to have Graves' disease. I don't want to brag, but that's like the worst sound of one ever. Like people are like, I got cancer. I'm like, well, I got Graves' disease. Like they named it after a grave. Well, Dr. Grave, but it still counts. So Graves' disease uh, is hyperthyroid due to autoimmune, right? And so I loved it, except for the side effects. I mean, you didn't need sleep. You were just always like just ready to go. You just... You had tons of energy. You're just, uh, life was amazing. Like I thought maybe I was developing superpowers, but I could feel the blood pumping in my arms. What was pumping. your blood pressure? Well, I don't know. It's thyroid. And uh, yeah, it's, it's probably made it really bad. But I felt like it was amazing. Like it was like, am I getting superpowers? Like I could feel the blood <laughs> inside my veins. You started lifting cars and, <laughs> like, and I thought, buildings. I thought it was really good. And then they're like, you have autoimmune disease and thyroid. So he was this close to flying. They, I did fly, and then I hit the ground <laughs> so, for a few moments. So eventually, the headaches got so bad, and the blood pressure got so bad that I had to actually do something about it. So then I went to the uh, endocrinologist, and he said, "We're going to cut it out." And I said, "Whoa, you're not going to cut stuff out of me. Uh, what causes this? You got to tell me what causes this." He goes, "Yeah, Mister." Yeah. And he's just like, well, you know, we can do all these tests and maybe figure stuff out, but we're just going to cut it out anyway. So when do you want to do it? And I was like, uh, nope. <laughs> and I was like, I was like 20 something. I'm like, you're not cutting stuff oh, out wow. of me. What happens if you cut it out? How, how do Ooh, you then you're super screwed. function later? So you're dependent 100% on a, a single dose of uh, armor or for natural or um, synthroid for the synthetic. Okay. But then if you have like, like, you know, if you're taking that and then you need extra in the evening, uh, you ain't gonna have it. It has a predictable half life. Your well, kind life's of, gonna it's kind of being a type one diabetic, right? So it's gonna suck. Wow. Okay. So then that's hyperthyroid. But what about hypo? So what hyper about? is the more likely to cause um, heart problems. Heart problems okay. because it's that hyper is just again like hyper like like that, but hypo is slower. So, so they use a gain weight. Now they can have arrhythmias with either one. And maybe low blood pressure with hypo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so the way that you fix hyper is the same way you fix hypo, which is fix why the habit, which is usually secondary to chronic, uh, unrelenting stress and an inability to cope with it. 
And so they got to change all their lifestyle stuff, and then the thyroid can just work normally. Uh, the other one is that they have autoimmune, but autoimmune, as you know, is just uh, T-cell dysregulation with secondary molecular mimicry. So sensitivity. God that dang is. it, you're supposed to be amazed. He... Nobody's impressed anymore. That's only because you say these things every show. <laughs> <laughs> so the best um, way to take your um, thyroid medicine is to bend the spoon 90 degrees, get a beauty. Just go ahead and ca- I'll c- I'll count the new- seconds until he's done. I'll come up with a new thing. Okay. Okay, so moving on. So we've kind of ta- talked about arrhythmias. Movement. I don't really think anybody answered your, your movement question. Yes, they did. Oh. Uh, Linda I'm answered 150 minutes. Good that job, Linda. That doesn't sound right. Is that right? 150 minutes of exercise. That's a lot. That's 30 minutes a day, five days a week. So if I Or did, you could change it up. And it, it, it can be... It how many doesn't, hours is that? How many hours is 150 minutes? Two hours and 20 minutes? So I could just do that in one day. <laughs> you wouldn't want to do it in one day. Boom, done. But with exercise, um, you could break that up. Maybe it's 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there on some days. Maybe yeah. it's... But we want to be active and you want to be in... You want to be intentionally active, but then you also want to be inci- incidentally active. So incidentally, that's we need both. And we're also lacking in America in just basic incidental movement, like standing or gardening or cleaning or just being just being active without any forethought. Doing so. Um, so park further away from work, take the stairs... Um, stand up to do things you might normally sit down to do. Um, a standing desk. Standing desk. Talk on, while you're talking on the phone. Stand. Oh yeah. But standing uh, desk is the same as running seven miles. Oh really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So you want to stand every hour? At least get up every thirty minutes to an hour. Didn't know um, that. Don't. But you work at the YMCA. Um, I don't know everything about standing desks. <laughs> okay. Do you guys have standing desks? Hey desk Kyle. Now? Huh. Do they have a standing desk? Then? We do. Yeah, I oh. don't. I don't have a standing desk, but <laughs> people have the option. It doesn't work in my space. Neither you know? do I. Because I feel like I'd be standing and looking down at patients. Which is probably something you would like, because that would make a, you feel superior. I should get to a gavel, them. stand over him, and like, don't eat meat and dairy. <laughs> Judgment. Okay, so you. All right, so him. we've done wine. Wait, we're, we're not going to get done this wine. List. We're just recapping. We've done wine. Get drunk. Eat some healthy food. <laughs> healthy diet. Move. Daily exercise. And, um, and you know what? This one, this one's even less than what you said. What? So this is 40 minutes of walking a day and then one, one hour, hour strenuous a week, activity a strenuous week. activity. Yeah. So like that, I love that because it really, again, grandma could do that stuff. Yeah. Right? So and that's to reduce your risk by 92%. Yeah. Yeah. And then, healthy body weight. So you want a waist size is 85% of your hip size. So weight alone, weight by itself, is not necessarily a risk factor for cardiovascular disease by itself. That's right. There are some people who are a little bit heavier who are not at risk. Americans. But, so what we look at is metabolic issues, and that's where waist size becomes more important a more important risk factor than weight by itself. So let me ask you this then, Smarty Bridges. Uh huh. How do you get the healthy waist to hip ratio? Um, I think even our viewers could answer that, <laughs> Doctor G. Maybe, maybe by exercising and eating right. Are you giving me crap? <laughs> I do not like the roles reversed. <laughs> uh, so waist size, and, and in terms of that weight, like risk factors in general, the more risk factors you have, the higher, the high, the higher your risk. What if so. I'm chubby and I just get bigger hips? That's okay. I'm out smarting, smarting heart disease. You are, because pear shaped people typically have are less at less risk. Really? My pear. I'm not going to answer that. I have a dad bod. <laughs> Whatever that is. I come from an apple-shaped family. Okay. We have heart disease in my family. Is there anybody out there who has heart disease in the in the family? We know it's a, an American culture thing, but it's also a family. I mean, 
you're going to have some families who are more predisposed to cancer, maybe some who are more predisposed to heart disease. I have a history of strokes. What kind of, what's your history like? What's your family history? Well, that's a HIPAA violation. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it doesn't have to what be is, you. Include it with your social security number too, <laughs> and your birthday. <laughs> yeah, you can just say and your fa- code. I have a family history of <laughs> okay, okay, diabetes, All or right. I have a family history of. So I, so I do what I do, uh, and made all my changes because my dad died of uh, complications of type two diabetes. My little sister had a heart attack. My uh, mom had like ninety nine percent occlusion of her LAD artery, right? Um, sister has arrhythmias and weird stuff with her heart because um, she took FinFin. Um, so the heart disease and diabetes, and my mom has autoimmune stuff. And what else? I, I don't think we have arthritis or anything in our family. I've definitely uh-huh. got heart disease, stroke, and not much cancer, but stroke and diabetes. Yeah. So. Stroke and heart attack on both sides, Missy says. Yeah. Yeah. So, Linda says on a positive note that she forgot to mention that she dropped six pounds after stopping soda. Nice. That's, it's it's such, it's so simple. Just soda. So simple. Just soda. Mm Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah, one soda a day puts you at 80% risk of having type 2 diabetes. Yeah. What? Yeah, it's pretty crazy, huh? Eighty-two percent. No, eighty percent. Eighty percent. Yeah. And then the last thing on here to prevent heart disease by ninety-two percent is not smoking. Which That's a big one. Smoking. Nobody smokes anymore. He doesn't think people smoke anymore, but they do. Do you cigarettes? guys know any smokers? Nobody's, I know smokers. Nobody's smoking cigarettes anymore. I only have like one patient that smokes cigarettes. I worked at a bookstore, and it. Well, they smoke. well, they're all. There's a lot of smokers. They're all at the depressed bookstore. poets going into the Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> if they allowed smoking at a Barnes and Nobles, man, everybody would be up there in Starbucks, like smoking and reading. What about people in different types of socioeconomic classes, or well, that's different mm, occupations? Doctors are smokers sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I n- actually I know of someone at a prestigious health organization. I don't know this person personally, oh, well, but I know that there is a up. smoker <laughs> at a prestigious health organization in Wichita. Yeah. So. So that's like three people we know. Amy says yeah. she knows lots of smokers. What? Linda says four out of ten of her siblings smoke. What? Wait, you have it's ten siblings? It's twice sim- the risk. No, 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 wait. She said she has Four. ten siblings? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd smoke if I had ten siblings. <laughs> Holy crap. It's probably the, the uh. four at the very top. <laughs> I'm tired of babysitting all my friend, all my uh, siblings. So, I've got some risk. On, I've got some stuff on smoking yeah. that I brought. Nobody smokes. You, well, we, no, you, don't you just to, don't no, hear about no, it. No, there's nothing you can say. Everybody knows it's bad. Everybody knows it's bad. <laughs> but why is it? But it's twice as bad. It's twice as bad as what? As everything else. Light cigarettes are worse. It's the biggest single risk factor for sudden cardiac death. Mm. That's a pretty big deal. Okay. So preventing heart disease by ninety-seven or sorry, ninety-two percent. Red wine, eating healthy, moving more, and not smoking. Mm. Uh, is it? Okay. So other things. So a lot of times like busting clots, like what could I eat on a regular basis to bust clots? So like Harvard says the best foods to reduce heart disease are nuts, garlic, onions, and red wine. And then to prevent arrhythmias, it's uh, omega-3 rich foods and get rid of caffeine for best Caffeine, we didn't talk about caffeine and Mm -hmm. arrhythmias. Yeah, but it's gonna be like a Starbucks that, yeah, 350 milligrams caffeine or so. Green tea is probably okay, but. Yeah, green tea should normalize everything. And then Bastyr College, which is nat- naturopath college, college, they said three cloves of garlic every day for one month raises your HDLs by, hold on, 23%. That's awesome. Yeah. So we before, we lied to them. We said 
that the only way you can reach HDLs is through movement and healthy oils. And not eating trans fats. Yeah. Reducing trans fats and sugars. But we didn't say garlic. Yeah, but I, I feel like I probably said garlic, but maybe I mentioned it like under my breath and like You, you got interrupted me. by mm. your co host. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> So, the University of Missouri, they did this wonderful study where they took a bunch of monkeys, fed them a bunch of lard until they had heart disease, and then they fed them low-dose vitamins, and it reversed the blockages by 30%, or okay. 33%. So, that means the, the, that the cure was really, whatever you're doing, you can always switch, reverse it, by eating fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, berry, legumes, and greens, because they're really high in vitamins. So, this is low-dose, it's not even high-dose. It's not even adding turmeric or, or ginger to it, which are deplacking. I just think it's interesting that the saturated fat was the cause of his. Well, they did a lot of it. So if we eat a little saturated fat, it's okay. Uh, but like a lot. Like yeah. I'm sure they're pounding those monkeys full of that. So lard. you don't want to have a diet just of all saturated yeah. fat. Yeah, like my mom, she had a that Crisco can, and then we put all the extra grease and stuff in there. Yeah, we well, yeah. had it too. Yeah. <laughs> and then you scoop that nasty Did anybody stuff else have the Crisco stuff. can? Who had yeah. the Crisco can <laughs> full of rancid, gross, oxidated oils that they used? What did we use it for? Like baking, I guess? Making bacon? biscuits and gravy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All in the bacon grease it. was the big coveted, like, don't throw that bacon grease out. <laughs> you got to put it in the can. <laughs> Them's were the days. Yeah, I thought about maybe if we were back in the 80s, we'd be doing oil oil pulling, <laughs> recycled bacon <laughs> grease from the can. Um, I, I want to jump in here and just get these guys' um, feedback. Oh. So before we... This is part two of our talk. I don't think we're going to have a part three. But um, is there anything specific that you really want to know about? Like, have you gotten certain numbers... Um, on your blood tests or you've seen that things are imbalanced and um, do you have any questions in regards to that? Do you have high tri triglycerides or do you have low HDLs or is there anything that you're really wanting to work on? What? It's just stuff in my head. This is all the time, nonstop. Sorry. So okay. let us know if you have any specific questions. Yeah. Well, and then uh, other research. Uh, okay. So clot busting, these are things that, that will bust up clots and prevent clots by 80% for all, or no, no, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. 80% of all strokes are from clots. <laughs> I did that wrong. So what are the clot busters? So onions, hot peppers, mushrooms, ginger, clove, veggies, olive oil, green tea, and red wine are the biggest clot busters in your diet. Can you slow down a little bit? <laughs> Can you say that again? Biggest clot busters. Biggest clot busters. Onions, hot peppers, spicy peppers. Okay. Mushrooms. Yum. Ginger, cloves, veggies, olive oil, green tea, and red wine. Biggest clot busters. Yeah. Awesome. And then these are several different uh, university studies. So Harvard says that a six ounce can of tuna is equal to one full strength ibuprofen for reversing uh, uh, or aspirin for reversing uh, uh, clots. So that that goes back to the blood thinning properties of the fish. Right, but it's the omega threes. So it's not yeah. actually artificially thinning the blood. So then you don't. So fifty percent of people that take aspirin to prevent stroke will end up dying from the side effect of the medication. That brings up a question I've had with other people while I'm coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I know, let's say ginger, for instance, I know that that will also thin the blood, correct? Yeah, it, it does it by deplacking the arteries. It's a totally different mechanism. So, so you it, can't, what if they're on a medication? Yeah, so it's theoretical. So it's the same thing with uh, omega-3s and fish oils and, and turmeric. And Are there like, interactions with their current medications if they were to, let's say they wanted to go beyond the food and they start supplementing with ginger pills or right. turmeric pills, are they going to run into medication interactions with their current meds? Mm, potentially, but they'd have to do a lot, a whole lot, and it's not doing the same thing as the medication. So, okay. I mean, that's nice. Where like with patients, I think they they feel a lot better when they come to me and like 
um, you know, I, I look at what they're doing and then say, okay, here's what we want to do. Um, but very quickly, you know, th there's a lot of caveats or worry for that, but it's almost all potential. So it's kind of like saying, well, 35,000 people died of uh, the complications of Vioxx, right? They had a heart attack due to Vioxx to get rid of pain. But how many people have died from ginger, <laughs> complications of ginger? None. Yeah. None. Okay. Well, well except I... in the last episode of, I think, of uh, Gilligan's Island, Marianne. Oh, I knew you were going there. Ginger. I knew you were going there. No, Ginger killed Marianne. <laughs> She's jealous. So we've got some people chiming in on their numbers. All right. We've got some high triglycerides, uh, or one person, high triglycerides, um, high LDL and triglycerides. Yeah, so, so that's all diet. Yeah, so with triglycerides in general, um, reducing sugars and processed foods and excess calories will reduce triglycerides. And if you can convert your triglycerides to quadrisolides, that too. Uh, the way you, and the way you can reduce those, the very simple way, which I've said before, and I think in previous talks, without medication, is exercise. Oh yeah. So we're reducing intake of those excess carbs and increasing exercise. I got a question for them. Yes, Doctor G has a question for you. What is one drink? That if you drink it five times a day... Gasoline. Damn it! You're not supposed <laughs> to give the answer. Okay, one drink five times a day that will reduce your risk of heart disease by 50%. One drink five times a day. Water? No. And you don't get to participate. Okay. So, while well, you guys figure that out, it's really good research. So then Cornell University said red wine is a clot buster... Zhajen Medical University said that the catechins and tannins that are in uh, green tea actually is equal to the clot busting of one ibuprofen, or sorry, one aspirin. So again, we have tuna and then we have green tea. Both are more clot busting than aspirin without killing your kidneys in the process because ibuprofen and aspirin is the most likely cause of um, um, kidney failure in the U.S. And then... Uh, Tylenol's leading cause of liver failure. So they answered it. So Amy Maybe. said green tea. Five cups of green tea. Five cups of green tea. I'm not sure I could drink that much. No, you know, if you get like that's so that's like one cup and two cups and like that. that's two and a half. So that'd be like two of these. Eight ounces is a cup, right? I that's think cups of tea ounces. is like six ounces or something. Okay. Isn't it different? Like a cup of coffee? I like have trouble ounces? getting all my water. Yeah. So Well green tea counts as water. I know Booyah. that. I'm, well, okay. Booyah! I'll, I'll so just you just drink make a green tea pitcher then. of green tea, put it in the fridge, and then just pour, pour that out for your water. So there's green tea, which you love. I know that. What about oolong? Yeah, but green tea What's doesn't your... love me back. It's, I have a sensitivity <laughs> to it. What are your thoughts on oolong? Because it's one step up in um, caffeine, but it's uh, <clears throat> fermented. Okay. Oolong is oolong. <laughs> <laughs> So the whole goal is antioxidants, and you don't want to drink an oxidative drink because then you have to eat more fruits and vegetables and do the damage you're doing. But green tea, white tea, yellow tea uh, is uh, antioxidant, which reverses heart disease, cancer, diabetes, all that kind of stuff. So no on oolong. Oolong is oolong. We're gonna have to I talk made that up. to Miss uh, Padilla about That's that then. Patent pending. Okay. Oh, and there's medicinal effects for black tea and stuff like that. But you know, I always give the example: if you took an apple. And you cut it open, that is green tea, white tea, yellow tea. That's fresh, right? That's going to reverse disease. But if you found that uh, apple two weeks later under the cabinet and it's all black and gooey, <laughs> it might still have medicinal effects, but that is oxidized. Reduced. Yeah. Well, and it's overcooking things or over, overcooking things in general. Yeah. Or Straight is up. It's not good. Yeah. Um, looking through some questions. And then Harvard it's, said that chili peppers are more effective than cot busting medications such as Plaquil. So now there's a thing where they keep uh, hot pepper juice in little vials, and if someone's gonna have a heart attack, then they drink that and it busts that clot up. Pepper so juice. Pepper juice. Okay, you were saying. 
<laughs> I forgot. I'm never going to get through all my research, you know. You just keep adding in we interesting add commentary. <laughs> oh, we I can, can post add it a list. to the next show. You oh, no, no. I don't want people to know all this. Tim says, does green tea count if it is kombucha? It absolutely. 100%. And then some. That's firm. Oh. So oolong is fermented death. Kombucha is <laughs> fermented life. Life. Right? Hey, uh, Dave is saying, it said syrup, syrup heptase is a supplement recommended for cleaning of arteries. Who's this Is that Dave like Night of Natto? I don't know. Dave. Is that like Natto? Yeah. That we're going to get to? Dave be knowing stuff. So. We'll get to the enzymes. Yes. I was going to wait till the end for this, but Dave's going to bring it up. All right. Well. So. So, right. Tim, the peppers are spicy peppers, like really spicy kind of peppers, um, not like bell peppers. And then, uh, so Dave, like, yeah, natto kinase. So, there's natto kinase, serratio peptidase, serapeptidase, and lumbricase. Those are all very potent um, enzymes. Enzymes that are clot busting, and they also break up scar tissue and other stuff. So, we've had people with deputant contractures. Boom! No deputant, depu- yeah, contractures. <laughs> So, okay. uh, so, na- so out of all those, though, natokinase is probably the most well-documented in research and clinical trials to be effective with no side effects. None. Right? Okay. So now you can bust clots without killing your kidneys or dying of bleeding disorder. Pretty amazing. Right? And so natokinase is made from the fermentation of Bacillus subtilis. Bacillus subtilis. Bacillus subtilis. Yeah. So they take uh, soybeans, make them into this gooey, cheesy, gross thing, and then that's natto, right? Um, so Suzanne said, what about uh, tofu? So fermented tofu as natto is a clot buster for sure. So but with, it's fer- fermented though, right? Well, you, yeah, fermented. yeah, it's kind of fermented with that. Okay. Yeah, natto's, and tempeh's really fermented, and then natto's super fermented. But that is, the, so if you're going to do one, natto is probably the best one to do as a clot buster. So even with me, I kind of think about that too with my dad dying of a heart attack or a stroke or whatever he died of, um, pulmonary embolism. Mm-hmm. Same thing, but in the lungs. He had a heart attack of the lungs. A stroke of the lungs. What if I name my heart good luck and then I have a stroke of good luck? <laughs> All right, so... Um, <laughs> So natto kinase. <laughs> so Look at the wrinkles on my forehead from this way you stress me out. So I know. <laughs> so one of the things you can do is maybe like if you're doing stuff pretty healthy, maybe do a uh, a bottle of natto kinase uh, over the course of a month, maybe twice a year, just to kind of clean out all the scar tissue, all the clots. But if you have risk, like real actual risk and real concern, you really want to do consistent natto kinase as a supplement. And that, I think last time we talked about it was... Uh, 2,000 FUs. What kind? 2,000 FUs. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are fibrolytic units. So, I can say this on TV. Okay. So, you want to make sure you get enough FUs. <laughs> <laughs> and FUs are really important. <laughs> so, if somebody's having uh, heart stuff, you should go like, FU... You need some fibrolytic units. Can you say that one more time? What? Have you? <laughs> All right. Okay. So 2,000 FUs is about 100 milligrams of natto. And so you can do more. There's a lot more. Like if somebody does repair gold, uh, which is by Enzymedica, I mean, that's where we do serratio peptidase. And that's more for scar tissue reduction uh, for someone with like MS uh, or to putrid contracture or injury, shoulder injuries. And that's like 80,000, like it's a huge amount. So, <clears throat> so natokinase. I do natokinase over serapeptidase, just research wise, it's so much better. But really, it probably does exactly the same thing. Would you recommend that with the dosing and the timing and all of that, that someone work with a practitioner when they're taking natokinase? So, Probably deals with probably based on how well how comfortable they feel with it. So like me, it's nice when patients come to me because I, I look up tons of research and I'm always involved in the research of that. And so then you have this kind of like okay, I don't have to figure it out. This guy knows what he's doing. Just tell me what to do. 
but also patients that have maybe us three or four medications and stuff you know there's that comfort level of like like maybe i can talk to my prescriber about getting off these if i do an antikinase so it just depends i mean i think people can blindly take it it's in the health food store uh it's one of the few things that really doesn't have a, a side effect to it because it only breaks down fibrin which is a byproduct of inflammation and damage okay so it won't hurt healthy tissue no. You said it breaks down scar tissue as well. Right, right. Yeah. But it's ratio peptidase, really high dose ratio peptidase, uh, with a lot of FUs uh, in there is, is which one. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have another question, and I'm going to kind of skip down a little bit from Rania. She says, overcooking is considered what? And I think I could speak to this a little bit. So when overcooking, when you're overcooking something, it can turn things into trans fats and make them more oxidative. Um, Which so you want, only cause heart disease. You want to not go above the smoke point, is that correct? Right. So with any oil that you use, you want an oil with a, ideally with a high smoke point, like oh, no, no. Or a low, is it low or high? No, you just want a healthy oil and stay below that smoke point. Well, like avocado oil has a high smoke well, point, five, so you can cook a little bit yeah, higher with it. 550, but yeah. But you want people to cook lower and slower. So slow Not and low in general. Slow and low. Like a, a, yeah, like a Mac Davis song or like a, a Barry White kind of song. I feel safer using avocado oil for cooking just because I know it has a higher yeah. smoke point. No, so. but so, so if you use it, then you have that like uh, insurance of that, but then still cook lower and slower and then it's only good, no risk. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. Um... So, yeah, lower and slower until it's done. Yeah. What? <laughs> well, she was asking how many degrees, how many minutes. Yeah, and so... so I was trying to... Yeah, so, you know, olive, that. typically olive oil, cooking oil, you want to stay around 350, 325, but you probably cook lower than that. If your oil smokes, then it's trans fats. Yeah. And Amy uses avocado. Yeah. So... But avocado is a fairly new thing on the market too, so like it's, it wasn't an option for for uh, for everyone. Right, I think olive oil was what people were using before. Yeah, olive oil, coconut oil. Yeah, um, things like that. Those are your best so. anti-inflammatory ones. So we are at time. Damn it, man! So I'll um, post this stuff for you guys, since we can't seem to make it through after two episodes <laughs> because I somebody, keep interrupting. Somebody keeps on jokes. And, um, and up. answering questions from Answer the audience. Questions. Yeah. So, <laughs> what was the other thing? We can ask... Oh, <clears throat> and as you guys know, we're both wearing uh, bright red to support the troops. So... Uh, <laughs> so I just said it because you're not wearing it. <laughs> so it makes you look like a traitor. <laughs> wow. He's always going to try to be superior to everyone else. Look, I'm shorter than you. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Any last questions? Go ahead and type them in. Um, Dr. G will try to answer those. What are we doing when next he week? Can. What's the next what do topic? you guys want to hear about next week? Oh, we had a topic. And we have the Wise Women event starting. The, the website will be up pretty soon. Uh, we have all our speakers and uh, event information so that'll be exciting and we'll have some of the wise women speaking which Holly's going to be one of the wise women we uh, we weren't exactly sure if that would be okay so we had a big vote since I'm not that wise mm -hmm. like on this on the scale of well, wise points I showed them the picture of you when you were younger and then I showed them the new picture of you with the gray and they're like oh my gosh she looks so wise <laughs> she's so wise that's what I loved about when I started getting like little bits of gray hair is like I was just like because I was so young and I had so much education and stuff, like nobody takes me seriously. Like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're so young. But then I got gray hairs, and then I'm legit. Yeah, too legit. Too legit. Um. So my thought is, thyroid or order addictive foods. I already did all this for next week. How about addictive foods for your thyroid? <laughs> Does anybody How about foods have that any are requests? To your thyroid? Any special requests for next week? I know. No. 
Okay. We should do part three. Part three. Let's do part three. All right. Post your guys' questions. Post your comments. Um, I'm getting caught up on all my questions from Clawed the Clawed up? You're uh-huh. getting caught Clawed up. up. I got to take some nanokinase. <laughs> but, um, so post that stuff. I'll answer all your stuff, too. And okay. the great Holly, the boss, uh, will answer uh, all those questions also. I don't know about that. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating. Thank you for sharing your um, your successes. Oh, we do have a yes for part three. Part three? Part three. Thank you for the hair compliments. But, what? Yeah. I'm going to get a bunch of gray hair next time. Like, there. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to sign off for now if nobody needs anything else. That's all? I think that's all. We're five minutes after. I think another after. hour. Well, I've got a life. You know, at the Y, I thought they, they had endurance. <laughs> so. All right. All right. All right? I feel like I don't want to say goodbye for some reason. No, we love you guys. All right. Okay. You don't want to say bye? Aw. Kawaii. All right, bye, guys. Bye. Don't touch that button.